This is America's Roundtable from Washington, D.C., an initiative of the U.S.-based think tank, the International Leaders Summit, in partnership with Lancer Broadcasting and the Pledge Radio in Michigan. I am Joel Anand Sami, your co-host, joined by Natasha Sardoc, economist and co-founder of the International Leaders Summit Think Tank. America's Roundtable brings together leading voices from business, government, media, and the public policy arena. Thank you for joining us on America's Roundtable. This weekend on America's Roundtable, we are delighted to have two extraordinary leaders join us. U.S. Congressman Mike Boss from the great state of Illinois, a principal leader in Washington, D.C., and Ambassador Pete Hoekstra, America's top diplomat to the Netherlands and a former congressman from Michigan. To lead our conversation on America's Roundtable from Washington, D.C., we are honored to welcome Congressman Mike Boss, who represents the 12th district of the great state of Illinois in the U.S. House of Representatives. Congressman Bost is known to all for his commitment to advancing America's values and principles in Washington, a fight he began in the U.S. military serving in the Marines, then as a first responder, a local job creator, and a state representative. Congressman Boss, it is our great honor to have you return on America's Roundtable. Welcome, Congressman Bost. Joel and Natasha, it's wonderful to be with you. Thank you for having me on. Congressman Bost, you are to be commended for your principal leadership in advancing the important initiative with the Farmer Veteran Coalition of Illinois, the Illinois Farm Bureau, and other groups for a partnership to provide job opportunities for Illinois veterans. Published reports state that Farm Corps will pay furlough to unemployed veterans with agricultural producers who have an immediate need for on-the-farm labor. In light of the challenges we face today in America and the plight of our veterans who have served our nation with pride and are seeking jobs, could you share with our listeners your vision of empowering veterans and how this system works, which could benefit other states like Iowa, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Virginia? Well, let me tell you that Farm Corps was a similar uh, legislation or similar things were done uh, in a program that Rick Crawford out of Arkansas was doing. However, unique to Illinois, we tried to reach out, and, and basically what we're trying to do is is we get furloughed veterans to sign up in, onto the Farm Corps, and then uh, the, the reason being is is that, that a lot of our labor is short in our ag areas. Some some producers have had trouble securing labor through the H-2A program. That's that's where uh, your migrant workers uh, uh, that come up and, and do uh, and, and help on many jobs, uh, whether it's dairy, uh, it's also uh, in our area, it's apple trees, uh, peach trees, and then uh, specialty crops. But the H-2A labor was having trouble moving during the COVID virus. However, we had veterans that were furloughed, and so what we wanted to do was expand Farmacore, and that, that it not only covered the H-2A, but it also car- covered just farm labor. We worked with the Illinois Farm Bureau and the state of Illinois and the Farmers Veterans Coalition, and we launched this program. The Farm Corps website uh, is a platform where, where we can connect veterans who need the jobs and employers who need the labor. So the farmer and the producer can submit jobs on the website. Veterans can then go on and view what postings are available and then contact through the farmer and then uh, be able to, to get work that way. We're in the process right now of opening the post on that website, and we're hoping that uh, there will be, uh, you know, this will be a valuable resource that we can continue to operate even after COVID-19 uh, is over. And, and the types of jobs are uh, on-farm jobs. Uh, any producer can submit for it for livestock to orchards and uh, any farm out there. Uh, the types of job would depend on the need of the, of the employer, and then pay it would be set by the employer. And the website, in case any of your listeners wants to go on it, it's www.illinoisfarmerveterans.org backslash farm crops. It was a, a very large group that got together to do this. It was the Farmers uh, Veterans Coalition of Illinois, the Illinois Farm Bureau, the Illinois Agri Ability, the Illinois Pork Producers, Illinois Specialty Growers Association, Illinois Department of Agriculture, Illinois Department of Employment Securities, and Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs. It was really a, a 
good group of everybody involved seeing a need and moving forward with this. Congressman Boss, you're bringing out the best in America's spirit, the importance of work ethic, entrepreneurialism, and how a society and specifically America's private sector can come up with real solutions. Thank you so much for your leadership on that front. And Glad to help. Glad to help. And as we look at the deadly coronavirus, which originated in Wuhan, China, and which has appended the lives of millions of Americans and dealt a heavy blow to our economy, we know that President Trump responded during the early stages by stopping all travel from China, then Europe and other nations. Uh, On the one side, we have seen America's first responders, physicians, and countless volunteers step in to provide health and hope. Churches and synagogues have provided food to those in need. On the other hand, Congressman Bost, we have seen how some governors have imposed stricter rules and executive orders which critics have called out as violating the U.S. Constitution. Uh, Congressman Bost, uh, we would like uh, you to share about your letter to Governor Pritzker, who threatened to unjustly withhold federal funding to businesses. And let me provide a brief background Uh, Based on the Bureau of Labor Statistics data, Illinois is the third largest state in job losses between February and April this year. Four states with the largest job losses were New York, New Jersey, Illinois, and California. They represent almost one-third of the U.S. economy. What is common to all of them is that for 10 weeks they had very strict lockdowns in Illinois, There were 50% of job losses in the leisure and hospitality industry, around 15% in retail, 11% jobs were lost in the construction industry. Illinois has still stay-at-home order in place and is still in the second phase of the four-phase plan of reopening with arbitrarily 28 days between the phases. Governor Pritzker threatened to withhold federal appropriated funding to localities that safely tried to reopen in accordance with those guidelines, but ahead of his arbitrary timeline. Congressman Bost, we commend you for bringing necessary pressure with your letter to the U.S. Congress to take action to prevent governors from withholding federal funds appropriated by Congress for local municipalities that allow their small businesses to reopen in accordance with federal health guidelines. Well, let, let me say this, Natasha. Hopefully, we're going to start moving into the third phase in the state of Illinois on Friday, at least. that I would like to see that. You know, this disease is not Republican or Democrat. And in my district, St. Clair County Board was one of the counties tried to reopen early. Well, as soon as he did, as they did, that was when the governor uh, said through his spokesperson as well as himself, when he asked for the money from the federal government for the COVID-19 bailout, yet he threatened to withhold that funding from any of these local municipalities that did not and would not, would not follow his orders on shutdown. And so he was threatening them with something that actually he didn't have the power to do. That being said, we put the letter together with the Illinois Republican delegation, urging both the speaker and the leaders in the Senate, as well as the administration, to prevent anything like this from happening, to make it to where he could block any federal taxpayer's money. If he didn't like the decisions they made, he was threatening to block them. So we sent that letter, uh, and then we also asked uh, Governor Pritzker himself to put together a a sensible turn-up plan. He kind of put some guidelines in that weren't really able to meet. And then whenever he also threatened to do fines and or jail time, this last week, uh, the group in the Illinois General Assembly called JCAR, which is a Joint Committee on Rules, meets. And it is truly a bipartisan group that has been in place in Illinois for ever is two Democrats from the House, two Republicans from the House, two Democrats from the Senate, and two Republicans from the Senate, all set on the same board, and the chair rotates. Their only job is to make sure that if the administration or any agency implements any given law, that they follow the letter of the law, not on to some other tangent. They actually went in, and Governor's stay-at-home order and his threatening to punish by jail time, they ruled that he does not have that power. 
also understand there's been lawsuits that are pending against him as well. It's going into federal case now where state legislator Bailey basically is taking the governor to court on going past his days. See, the, the governor's power was given him uh, after September 11th and kept for emergency purposes that he could actually make the voting or make these type rules for 30 days. But then he could not do another 30 days after that. He was supposed to have the legisl- state legislature come in. Then they would have to meet. And if it was going to change the law, then they would change the law. He couldn't do it by administrative rule. He overstepped that by three times now uh, by extending these orders whenever they're only allowed for 30 days. So that lawsuit is pending. You know, um, we need to reopen Illinois. We really do. Congress has provided us to tools. We have more than $150 billion in direct assistance, $25 billion in expanded testing. But it's still up to each individual governor, and they do have that power. But the governors have to use their state legislature, at least in the state of Illinois, because I know the law there very well. We've seen both Republicans and Democrats alike opening their states and doing it wisely, doing it with safety, doing it to make sure there's PPE available, all of these things. But unfortunately, in the state of Illinois, when you gave the list of those numbers of job losses and what we see, there's nothing blocking those borders. And Missouri has already opened. Restaurants are working. Indiana has already opened. Uh, Kentucky has opened. All of these states around. And so people who are even close to the border in Illinois are drive, driving over and going to shop. They're going to eat out at restaurants. They're going to other locations that are open. And that's where we're seeing the job loss. And we, we need to have a governor that wakes up and realizes that and starts a safe opening of the state. As we saw in Florida, uh, which was last to close and first to reopen, uh, just 4% of, of construction workers lost their job. And it is important to know that Governor DeSantis provided exemptions for lower-risk businesses, including manufacturers, contractors, and some retailers to operate during the season. Of course, remember, um, and I, I know you both know this, my wife and my daughter are cosmetologists. They've been nine weeks without having their business. Friday will be the first day that they'll have a chance. They're going to follow rules. They're going to follow the guidelines. But People are are needing to get back to work. We have seen our economy destroyed by a stay-at-home order that went out around the different states. But I do believe the economy will come charging back once we allow our people of this great nation to have the opportunity to go back and do what they do do best, and that's make a living for their family and pursue the American dream. Absolutely. We truly agree with you. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy announced the formation of the GOP's China Task Force, a committee to coordinate legislative strategy on all aspects of the China challenge, focusing on China's influence activities inside the U.S., uh, takeover of international organizations, uh, crucial supply chains, uh, and other things as well. As a think tank, we have often talked about the Cold War when America faced a communist-led Soviet Union, which oppressed its own citizens and worked to influence other nations. We know from history that at the end, the Berlin Wall fell and a new era of freedom swept Eastern Europe. Now, 30 years later, it seems that we are entering a new Cold War with a belligerent Chinese Communist Party. What should our fellow Americans be aware of when looking at an emboldened China? One thing the American people should realize is the CCP. Let's be very clear. The the Chinese people are good people. Absolutely. But their overbearing CCP is the the Communist Party. And they're imperialists. They're not just communists. They're imperialists. Are in the process of every way and every faction trying to get more power so that they can be the power broker for the world, for the entire world. We saw it early on with the steel and other products by them overproducing so that someone who's in a free market actually loses that market because they have overproduced and then they take over, get a monopoly on whatever that product is. What we've discovered with the coronavirus is they have it with medicine. They had it with PPEs. We knew it. We had it with steel and and aluminum and other items as they're trying to move. What we want to remember is, is that their main goal is not a free society, but a society controlled by China and controlled by the CCP. That's it. That's their main goal. 
the United States and many other states in the World Trade Organization, WTO, when they allowed China in, they did it with thinking that whenever they saw capitalism and saw it working and how good free trade is, that they would benefit from it and they would then shift over to a free democratic form of government to enjoy the benefits as do the other members that are in the World Trade Organization. They didn't. What all they did was use the rules to manipulate to better their positions, and by bettering their positions, they've worsened not only United States positions, but they've endangered the world because they have so much control of so many items. That's why we need to make sure that we bring all of those items back into countries that are free. Specifically, we in the United States cannot be in a situation where we have to have have to depend on someone else to make sure we've got PPE, make sure that we've got certain drugs, make sure that we've got certain compounds that go in drugs. All of this, the people need to know so they know and understand that we as a nation is doing, which is protecting our way of life and the future for our children and grandchildren. As you mentioned, all the items that we have to pay attention to with China. It is important also to look at Huawei, which is taking Mm -hmm. over complete telecommunication markets of individual nation states within Europe. And those states and countries are NATO members, so we share our intelligence with them. And that is something that we need to pay a closer attention, which is happening right now as we speak. Another issue that is out there that we need to be aware of is that people, because remember, no private business exists in China. No private business exists in China. Yes. Correct. So mm-hmm. when you hear of someone coming from China and now they're wanting to buy into a business or corporation that you own, be very, very careful. Be very careful because the idea is is they, that business will then be obligated to the CCP. Correct. Because there is no free and open ability to buy a business in, in, in China. But we could lose our own businesses here in the United States. Thank you so much indeed for your principal Thank leadership, you. and we appreciate you joining us on America's Roundtable. Thank you, Congressman Bost. Yo, Natasha, thank you very, very much. I am Joe Lanansami, your co-host, joined by Natasha Sertorch, economist and co-founder of the International Leaders Summit. Thank you for joining us on America's Roundtable. Visit our website, iLeadersSummit.org. Follow us on Twitter, iLeadersSummit and America's RT. On Facebook, International Leaders Summit and America's Roundtable. Thank you for joining us on America's Roundtable.